Welcome to Daily Devos. My name is Raymond Gregory, and I have two kids. And I never realized until I had two kids how annoyed with kids I could be. And not not all the time. I mean, it's it's a fun journey. I wouldn't trade it for the world. But there are just two two word sentences that can completely grate on my nerves. Like, I'm hungry. I guess that's the way it's said. It's like if, if they came up and said, "I'm hungry." father i'd be totally fine with it but it's i'm hungry it's like i'm so listless i might die it's like you just ate anyway i'm hungry i'm bored which that one gets to me especially uh, i sound like the old man but especially in this day in this day and age and <laughs> but the one that grates on my nerves the most is not fair not fair especially when my almost 10 year old daughter says it about my two-year-old son. I'm like, not fair. I'll show you fair. So anyway, it, it is amazing how we're just conditioned and wired for uh, seeking out fairness. I remember when I was a kid, if I complained that my brother got more soda than me, my grandpa would take my cup and pour a little bit more in his cup and say, now who has more soda? <laughs> and if I complained more, he'd just, and I'd lose more and more and more. So I had to kind of learn real quick okay it's not about fairness let's just be happy with what you have well today we're going to be looking at romans chapter 3 and today i'm going to be reading from the message translation and we're going to look a little bit at fairness and how we should live our lives as believers and not drawing comparisons with other people but just being completely faithful instead of seeking out fairness and devo i've titled Faithfulness over fairness. I thought of another one. Uh, Brennan stinks. That one. Oh my gosh. Sometimes I just pretend I don't hear it. I'm like, oh, what? Who's, who's something about the sink? Anyway, uh, I've titled today's Devo Faithfulness Over Fairness. So let's read in Romans chapter 3, starting in verse 1. So, what difference does it make who's a Jew and who isn't? Who has been trained in God's way and who hasn't? As it turns out, it makes a lot of difference, but not the difference some have assumed. Verse 2. First, there's the matter of being put in charge of writing down and caring for God's revelation, these holy scriptures. So what if, in the course of doing that, some of those Jews abandoned their posts? Did God abandon them? No. Did you think that their faithlessness cancels out their faithfulness? Not on your life. Depend on it. God keeps his word even when the whole world is lying through its teeth. Scripture says the same. Your words stand fast and true, rejection doesn't phase you. So in Romans 1 and Romans 2, Paul knows he's stirring the pot, especially with the religious Jews. And so now he's starting to get ahead of them because, you know, they're he's, he's, he's knowing that they're going to start drawing comparisons. It's like, well, wait a minute. We've been following the law. We've been in charge of God's law. We've been God's chosen people. Now you're saying these Gentiles can be saved too. What's going on here? That doesn't seem fair to us. And so now he's getting ahead of them. Um, whenever I think of fairness, I think of the story of the prodigal son, but not in the way that maybe you might think. I think of putting myself in the shoes of the second brother, the brother who didn't leave, the brother who was faithful to his father. Can you imagine what it must have been like uh, seeing your dad lavish all this stuff on your brother who completely blew his inheritance and then uh, just completely uh, ruined his life and then came home. And then your dad's celebrating and having a party. It's like, well, where's my party? That doesn't seem fair. But the the problem with that is, uh, and Roosevelt, uh, former President Roosevelt put it very, uh, very well, is a comparison is the thief of joy. Comparison is the thief of joy. And so I've uh, come up with three points from the text here in how to focus on faithfulness, sorry, focus on faithfulness instead of focusing so much on fairness. And so number one is this, 
don't let comparison steal your joy. And we live in a culture that is ripe with comparison. Uh, No doubt, several times a day, you pick up your smartphone and you open social media, whether it's Pinterest, Instagram, more than likely Instagram, or Facebook, and you go and you're hitting all the highlights of everyone else's day. We talked a little bit about this in the last Devo. And you start to become a little bit depressed. You're like, man, these people are living amazing lives. Look how beautiful that picture looks. Well, you don't see the 40 other pictures that they didn't post. You just see the best picture. And so that can start to steal your joy. It's like, oh, look what so-and-so is doing. It looks like so much fun. Oh, that life looks so joyful. That life looks so happy. If only I had that. And where you should have joy in the Lord now, uh, that comparison is stealing your joy. So uh, Paul asks some uh, hypothetical questions, and then he starts to actually answer them. Um, and like I said, to get ahead of the religious Jews. So he says this, but if our wrongdoing only underlines and confirms God's right doing, shouldn't be, we be commended for helping out since our bad words don't even make a dent in his good words. Isn't it wrong of God to back us up to the wall and hold us to our words? These questions come up and the answer to such questions is no, a most emphatic no. How else would things ever get straightened out if God did not do the straightening. So point number two is this. Don't let comparison lead to rebellion. Don't let comparison lead to rebellion. Uh, Another quote by another great president is, uh, it's amazing what you can accomplish when you don't care who gets the credit. I have to post that on my wall somewhere someday because sometimes, if you're like me, and um, you'll be working really hard, And you'll want to be recognized for the work that you're doing. And when you don't, you start to get a little rebellious. It's like, well, if I'm doing all this work and I'm not getting recognized for it, I'm not going to do this anymore. But we need to do things as unto the Lord and not let comparisons uh, lead us to the point of rebellion. Because sometimes others will get rewarded uh, and they didn't work as hard. And so we need to guard ourselves against that and then kind of just keep that in the front of our minds. It's amazing what we can accomplish when we don't care who gets the credit. Verse 7 says, It's simply perverse to say, If my lies serve to show off God's truth all the more gloriously, then why blame me? I'm doing God a favor. Some people are actually trying to put such words in our mouths, claiming that we go around saying the more evil we do, the more good God does, so let's just do it. That's pure slander, and I'm sure you would all agree. So point number three is this. Don't let comparison lead to complacency. Notice it says, the more evil we do, the more good God does, so let's just do it. That's pure slander, and I'm sure you would all agree. So we can start with letting comparison steal our joy, and then we can become a bit rebellious and start to rebel against it, and then before we know it, we've just become complacent. But we need to remember not to worship God and to serve God because for us it's worth it, but rather we need to do it because He is worthy of it. Don't worship Him and serve Him because it's worth it to you. Worship Him and serve Him because He is worthy of all adoration, praise, and service. And uh, we need to give our lives as a living sacrifice for Him. Galatians 1.10 says this, Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, then I wouldn't be Christ's servant. So, when you feel like life isn't fair, trust that God is faithful. Psalm 33.4, For the word of the Lord holds true, and we can trust everything He does. And so, we need to seek faithfulness in our lives and not be so caught up on fairness. Don't let comparison um, steal your joy. Don't let comparison lead to rebellion. And then don't let comparison lead to complacency. Complacency is a very dangerous place to be. So that is what I have for you today. Hopefully it ministered to you. And uh, it's something I need to preach to myself on a daily basis. And so... Um, I love you guys, and if you have any prayer requests, you can send them to Raymond at RaymondGregory.com. And we'll be back tomorrow, and I'll see you in the next video.